is an entrepreneur, real estate expert, and co-host of Netflix's first home renovation show, Stay Here. The series follows Peter and Genevieve Gorder as they help struggling property owners all over the U.S. redesign and market short-term rentals into showstoppers that draw in the big bucks. Let's take a look. How much more could he make by opening this up? You're making, on average, across across a 12-month period, about 250 a night there, right? Yes. Your occupancy is about 75%. That works out to be 22 nights a month. Right. Five okay. or 6,000 a month you're pulling in from oh, that? Five grand, six grand a month. Now, there is another property that's close to here, within quarter of a mile, that's an awesome Victorian townhouse that has a complete narrative. They're getting 375, and they are nowhere near as big as this. I think if you let us go to town on this place, we can double your rate and get you up to 500 a night. That's an increase of $66,000 a year. We love it. We want to go for it. Yeah. You in? I think that actually makes a lot of sense. I'm uh, really glad you guys are helping me with this. So let's do You're this. You're in? Let's do this. We got a deal. It's all in. Yeah. I like this. Sure. Everyone, please give a warm build brunch. Welcome to Peter Lorimer. Greetings. Thanks for joining us. So this is Netflix's first home renovation show. Yep. How does it feel to be leading that? Well, uh, I would be lying if I didn't say it feels freaking fantastic <laughs> to be uh, to be leading it. It's the first kind of foray into, um, I guess it's a little bit travel, it's a little bit business, it's a little bit rehab, and it's a Netflix uh, original show, and they picked me. So I'm very, very thrilled. I couldn't be happier. That's that. so cool. Yeah. So what are some of the mistakes that people make when they go out of town and they're looking for a, a short-term stay? What are some of the things that they, like, just miss? Tips. You want tips? Yeah, mm -hmm. I want some tips. Okay, I was hoping we might talk about nipple color a bit more, oh, but uh, no. Okay, well, want to go Have you ever seen a British one? one? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're always happy to. Okay, yeah, all right. You Have you watched the Tudors? Oh, the Tudors are going to be all nipple. Yeah. <laughs> Love the Tudors. That was the first show I watched as an adult as well. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, what are the worst things people can do you know, it's like my phrase is, I, I'm never very politically correct, but like I always say this with people when they're going out of town, you pay peanuts, you get monkeys, right? Mm -hmm. So don't try and skimp. If you want to have a great experience, yeah. you got to pay for it, right? Don't look for the cheapest thing and, and, and the, the place that's, that is the least booked. If a place is really, really booked all the time, it means it's going to be a great property. Yeah. And don't go too far off the beaten track. You know, you've got to be near all the amenities. I mean, there's a million things, but but I think trying to do it on a budget, we all want to save money, but trying to do it on a super budget always ends in disaster. Why is the focus on the short-term rentals? In what way? I mean, why build a show around this? Is it because of oh, the growth of things like Airbnb yes. and, and things like that? So Airbnb, which uh, originally literally started with uh, the two founders of Airbnb who had an air mattress, mm in a bedroom to try and make money to pay the rent, which is now a multi-billion dollar <laughs> company. Um, I think what it, this is why I find it exciting, because I'm a real estate guy in LA. Yeah. I'm a, I was a music business guy first, and then a real estate guy. And it's kind of the new frontier. Yeah. It's where we, the people, have the power, and you're not going through horrid middlemen mm -hmm. like me, <laughs> you know, real estate folks, who like, some of them can be a slippery bunch. And so I think the fact that it's gone from this kind of organically growing thing to a global multi-billion dollar yeah. industry. And it's become very slick and sophisticated now, whereas before it was kind of, you know, a little bit rough around the edges. Yeah, yeah. Totally. And in this show, in Stay Here, you mentioned it before, you get to, it's also a travel show, which I think is so cool yeah. and so different. And you call it the kind of the quintessential American experience. You go everywhere. What was your favorite place to visit? I knew you were going to say I know. <laughs> or you well, it was New it. York. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, they're all great for different reasons. I loved coming to New York because of the energy. Yeah. Love this city so much. Nobody in the audience will remember a nightclub called Save the Robots. And if you do remember a nightclub called Save the Robots, don't tell anybody you remember it. <laughs> um, but I used to come here in the, in the uh, early 90s, and uh, I almost lived here. But they're all different for different reasons. I will tell you, I got to hate the cold. Yeah. We shot through the winter. I mean, living in LA, I've turned very soft. And in Hudson, I thought my bones were going to shatter because right. it was so cold. But I think my favorite spot was here or Austin. Austin, mm. yeah, mm. Austin so great. Was wicked, really, really good. And what was your biggest challenge in like redesigning these rentals? I think it would be difficult. <sighs> well, the I think the the biggest hurdle, and this is this is 
what we find, not just with, with short-term rental, but with real estate as a whole, telling someone, hey, you know this place that you've created that you think is really great? <laughs> it's actually kind of a bag of crap, and we need to rip it to pieces. Uh, you want to have it as your little precious granny couch and, you know, this horrid floral uh, lacy blanket on your bed? Or would you want it to be like a, a business? And I think... I think that was what was uh, the most difficult part was literally watching these people's faces when I said, I'm really sorry, but we have to, we have to burn Granny's couch right. and put something in there that's a little bit more slick. Yeah. But it turns into a business. You know, right. And they're like, I have no idea why we're not making any money. It's I so know. good. Like, oh, because that couch is horrid. Because nobody wants <laughs> to sleep here. But um, yes. you also, you co-host the show with yep. someone we all know from Trading Spaces, uh, Genevieve Gorder. What's yes. it like working with her and doing the show with her? Jen was a doll. She was very kind, very generous. She's obviously, you know, been doing television a long time. And uh, she, I couldn't have hoped for a better co-host because mm -hmm. we just vibed. Mm -hmm. And she's kind of a wild horse and I'm a bit of a galloping wild horse as well. <laughs> And we kind of just trotted around together and it seemed to, uh, <laughs> it seemed to work in a, in a bizarre kind of way. She's so much fun. Her design sensibility. I used to watch oh, yeah. her in Trading Spaces and the reboot I've watched her. Her design sensibility is always really unique and yeah, she's, modern. Yeah. She's just got this, you know, she's got this, I mean, she has many different flavors. But every time I would walk in, because, you know, we kind of got pushed out uh, as, as Jen was staging it for the last day of the shoot. She's like, you lot, get out. <laughs> and I'd come back and, I, and I'm in the real estate game. And I'd be like, oh, wow, Ooh, wow, this is spectacular. Yeah, she's, she's a doll, very talented lady. Yeah, you mentioned um, some of the spaces needing that redesign. And what uh, like are some of your other tips for people that are looking to rent their property short term and how to find success in that space? Okay, so one of the tips that I wanna give the audience is this. If you ever find yourself going, hmm, will they notice that? They're gonna notice it. Mm -hmm. So every little detail, I'm gonna, the three words for short term rental that are the best are clean, clean, clean. You will not believe some of the photographs I have seen and some of the residue I have seen in short term rentals in the bathroom, and it's just gross. So the top tips are you gotta uh, imagine somebody's flying, like me, I'm flying into New York from London, mm. I wanna go to my place in Brooklyn. I don't know Brooklyn, I'm starving, I've got three screaming kids with me. I wanna be able to open up the cupboards, there's gonna be some snacks there, there's gonna be some drinks, there's gonna be some directions, mm -hmm. there's gonna be telling me about the local restaurants, everything's gonna be clean, everything's gonna be spelled out, I need Wi-Fi stickers everywhere, right. so my kids are not like, what's the Wi-Fi password, what's the Wi-Fi password, as yeah. they do everywhere we go. And I think the best thing that I can, I, the best tip I can give you is, if you can predict what you would want when you go away, mm -hmm. apply that to your own Airbnb or short-term rental. Mm -hmm. And the more you put in, don't skimp. The more you put in, it's like investing in a business and you are the CEO of a small boutique hotel. Right. And that's the way to treat it. And yeah. the concierge, it sounds like. And the concierge. Yeah. And a handyman. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, everything. <laughs> what are some ways that those renters can maximize revenue, which is something I know you guys talk about? Yes. So um, there are certain things that people universally kind of find offensive which are, you know, marigold walls and, you know, granny. I'm really hammering down on the grannies yeah. today. I'm so sorry. We get a lot of letters. <laughs> <laughs> like, no grandma. No, no grannies. Letters, not comments. The letters. Sorry, they love us. grannies. <laughs> love grannies to all the grannies out there. Um, so try and make things neutral. Sounds so kind of playing in the middle, but use cream sheets and nice whites. And don't like think, well, I love my stripy golden pink wallpaper because <laughs> people are going to hate it, mm -hmm. right. right? And so um, make sure that the tones are great. Try and make it as contemporary as possible. Everybody loves going into the bathroom and there are lovely smellies, high quality soaps. It, you just get that squishy kind of yeah. Yeah. feeling, you know? It feels good. How did you get into this space? Because you were a very successful music producer in the UK. Yes. So how does one transition into real, real estate? I ran away. <laughs> uh, so I was a, a house music record producer. Does anybody know what house music yeah. is? Yeah. Mm. Ooch, mm. ooch. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I got you. Um, and then around turn of the, God, this makes me sound so old. Around the turn of the century, <laughs> um, I decided I wanted to grow up and do something else. And so I started investing into, into property in LA because I thought it was really cheap yeah. on the global stage. 
kind of had a knack for it. And then because I mix music business, I had a ton of kind of A-list celebrity clients mm. who I represented buying and selling, many of whom I used to do short-term rental on their properties, like in Malibu on the beach, renting it for 100 grand a month and this, that, and the other. And then one thing led to another, and my evolution in short-term rental was kind of in tandem with the evolution of Airbnb. So it was wow. Good time. yummy. Yeah. yeah, it was. That's so cool. I never thought about how those two industries would overlap, but the way you just described it, it seemed like a very natural <laughs> transition roadmap. for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. yeah, it was. It was. I don't know if it was natural. It was a case <laughs> of when I retired from the music business, I had a number one in 12 countries, and I'm like, right, I'm done. <laughs> Hung up the headphones, and all my mates were like, what are you doing? Uh. You're at the top, mate. And I just felt that MP3s were going to radically change the industry. So I took my winnings and started plowing it into other stuff, mm, like wow. property and Google. And so it sounds like you have a knack for knowing what's the next big trend. Yeah. Do you have any advice yes. for us right now <laughs> yeah. what we should be working what and investing in? What stock? Right uh, you're really oh getting the real estate before it explodes. You're leaving music before it falls. Like, wow. <laughs> I did. And then, and then before the market crashed, I sold my properties and put all the money into Google. OK. Wow. Yeah. I will share, share the Okay, same. my crystal ball. Yeah. My crystal ball. We find out you're like jailed tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. You can be fraud. on a reality TV show up yes. there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's called Halfway House. Great. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Been in a couple of those. No, no, not really. Um, so I think for stocks, I like tech stocks. I don't know mm -hmm. anything about the other stuff, oil and all that. Mm -hmm. I feel that Google, God, I hope I don't ruin everybody's bank balances now. Mm -hmm. But I think Google is a safe bet. Yeah. I think um, Amazon is a safe bet. Of course, Netflix, load up on Netflix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and those are the big three that I go for. But I will say this, I will say this, and I'm not just saying this because I'm a real estate guy. Yeah. Get on the property ladder. My, are you allowed to swear on this show? Yeah. Yes. Oh, great, fucking <laughs> hell, thank God. <laughs> I felt like I was gonna burst. <laughs> um, you so, did really well though. Yeah, you, you did. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, my first house that I bought in LA, I bought in a shitty little neighborhood that everybody said, you are mental for buying in that neighborhood. But it was like only 12 minutes from Sunset Strip. So I'm oh. like, okay, this makes sense. And I bought it and I, it blossomed and I rolled that into some lofts and then I rolled it oh. and I rolled it and I rolled it. But it hadn't, if I hadn't got on the bottom rung of the property ladder, mm. I would, I don't know if I, I mean, I probably would be in property, but yeah. but I'm saying if you guys, well, I want a place in the East Village. Well, you know, maybe buy one in New Jersey first. Mm -hmm. Right. We'll let that blossom, commute in. You know, it's a uh, real estate and short-term rentals. It's a long play. Mm -hmm. And the wealthiest people I know have their wealth locked up in real estate. Mm -hmm. wow. Heard it here, guys. Woo. Heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for the oh, tip. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for being yeah, here. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah.